Hello and welcome to this short video brought to you by tutor to you This video is going to be looking at the AQA A-Level Specification for Psychology and in particular we are going to be recapping research methods and the key features of science. Now one of the main reasons for studying this topic, key features of science within psychology, is because it's quite a common question asked, is psychology a science? Now, Thomas Kuhn was instrumental in his understanding of scientific revolution and its contributions made in this area. Uh, he suggested that what distinguishes scientific disciplines from non-scientific disciplines is a shared set of assumptions and methods. Now, this shared set of assumptions and methods is what we call a paradigm. A paradigm shift is an important change in the basic concepts and experimental practices of a scientific discipline. It's a change from one way of thinking to another and it's also referred to as scientific revolution. Examples of paradigm shifts are the movement of scientific theory from the Ptolemaic system, the idea that the Earth is at the centre of the universe, to the Copernican system, the Sun at the centre of the universe, and the movement from Newtonian physics to the theory of relativity and to quantum physics. Alongside paradigms and paradigm shifts, Another key feature of science is theory construction and hypothesis testing. So what's a theory? A theory is simply a set of general laws or principles that attempt to explain events or behaviours. In psychology, a theory is a proposed explanation for the causes of behaviour. Theory construction is an important feature of any science. It occurs through gathering evidence via direct observation, which is the empirical method we are going to talk about soon. A scientific theory should also guide research by offering testable hypothesis, which is an educated prediction of what you expect to find, that can be then rigorously tested. Another key feature of science is falsifiability. Karl Popper argued that any research that wishes to be considered scientific must subject its hypotheses to falsification, to test it and to try and prove it incorrect. This process is a much more rigorous approach than simply trying to gather evidence to support the hypothesis. Remember, falsifiability or falsification is the idea that for something to be considered correct, you need to give people the opportunity to be able to prove it false. Only when they can't prove it false could you argue that your theory has weight behind it. One of the criticisms of some branches of psychology when we consider whether they are a science or not is that they lack falsifiability. If you think of Freud's psychodynamic theory, for example, it's very difficult to test the unconscious or some of his more vague concepts that he comes out with. Another key feature of science is replicability, and this was an important element of Popper's ideas. Replicability means that a study should produce the same results if repeated exactly, either by the same researcher or by another. Replicability has an important role in determining the reliability of a method used and the validity of a finding. Remember, reliability is how consistent a measure is and the validity is how accurate the findings are. For replicability to become possible, it's essential that psychologists report their studies with precision and rigour so that other psychologists can verify their work and the findings that they have produced. So this links to Popper's idea of falsification. Because in order to try to prove someone's theory false, you have to be able to replicate it step by step. So when you are reporting your findings as psychologists, you should make sure that you report each step of your experiment or of your research study with precision and rigour. That then gives other psychologists the opportunity to try to test your hypothesis. The final key feature of science is objectivity and the empirical method. If something is objective, this means it's not affected by the personal feelings and experiences of the researcher. If it was, this would be subjective. The researcher should remain value free and unbiased when conducting their investigations. Psychologists must strive to maintain objectivity as part of their investigations and keep a critical distance during the research so that their personal views do not discolour data collected or influence their participants' views or opinions or behaviour. Methods which are associated with a high level control, such as lab experiments, tend to be most objective. Objectivity is the basis of the empirical method, which emphasises the importance of data collection based on direct sensory experience.
The experimental method and the observational method support the empirical method most strongly. So to recap, in your exam, you might get asked to outline some of the key features of science or discuss some of the key features of science and relate it to some of the psychological experiments or psychological theories you have looked at. So, for example, you might talk about the theory of falsification and then discuss how Freud's work goes against this. It doesn't give the opportunity to be falsified and therefore it might not be considered a scientific theory.